after graduating, she was one of a select few to complete an internship with the World Health Organization in Geneva, Switzerland. And in 2015, she earned her master's degree in public health from the University of Tennessee. Dr. Tucker is also a certified health education specialist. She currently practices with Cole Pain Therapy Group in Memphis and shares her experiences in healthy parenting as CEO of Active Family Wellness, which she co-owns with her husband, Jude Miller, also a 2011 Logan grad. Dr. Tucker was recently appointed to the board of the World Federation of Chiropractic through the American Chiropractic Association. She's also a member of the Tennessee Chiropractic Association, the Tennessee Public Health Association, and the American Public Health Association. Please join me in welcoming someone who is actively impacting public health and the chiropractic profession in Tennessee, nationally, and internationally, Dr. Holly Tucker. graduation day. A day you have been looking forward to, no doubt, for at least a few years. First of all, I'd like to thank Dr. Flay McDonald for the invitation to speak and the honor of gracing this stage once again. I'd also like to acknowledge all the family, friends, mentors, and faculty here today to celebrate. Your presence and support over the years is evident as we honor these graduates. Thank you to my own family and my own mentors who are here with us as well. I walked across the stage eight years and four days ago, graduating as Dr. Holly A. Tucker, chiropractic physician. In that time, certainly a lot has changed about the person I was. Today, I'd like to share with you the journey I've been on. Hopefully you can see some similarities in how you envision your life in five, 10, or 15 years from now. I share with you my stories. I feel like my identity has changed a lot since leaving here. Or from the outside, like Dr. Hogarth recently reminded me, I am fulfilling the exact career path I told him I would back in student clinic days. That was a unique path, not your traditional chiropractor. I wanted to make a difference for the profession as a whole, and not just enter into practice. For me, that difference has come through various leadership positions through the American Chiropractic Association, the World Health Organization, and the Tennessee Department of Health. For you, today is a culmination of years of study, sweat, and maybe some tears in your pursuit of making a difference too. When I think about my life, my first identity is, is me, which I feel like is still a work in progress. Then I became a chiropractor, which was a vision that I had for myself since the age of 16 when my family chiropractor jokingly said, somebody has to take over this place one day. <laughs> then I became a mom, and boy did that rock things, more about that later. <laughs> Now I'm seen as a leader in the profession, serving on the board of our only true international organization, the World Federation of Chiropractic. I want to confess something to you today though. Every day, I still hear that little voice inside challenging one of those identities. Who am I to do this? What kind of mother am I? What kind of leader am I? For you today, that voice may have been telling you that you are just a student for the past few years, well, today, doctors, that changes. As chiropractors, nutritionists, and rehab specialists, we have an opportunity to serve our patients at a very high level. Our expertise is highly personal, and as studies show, highly satisfactory for our patients. Chiropractors historically spend more time with their patients listening and empathizing, which is ever important in our always on yet disconnected society we find ourselves in these days. So I ask you, what matters the most to you? Right now, in this moment, think of three things. My three things are family, travel, and purpose. Let's talk about family. You may all feel like a family right now after spending three and a half years of very close time together. Logan is a family. Please know that the closeness you all feel right now, you may long for years after graduation has come and gone. It may be replicated by homecoming, state or annual conventions, but every single one of you will never be in the same place at the same time ever again. Let that sink in for a second. I'd encourage you all to have a real connection plan with each other, maybe something more 
and just being Facebook friends. You will soon return home or venture out to a new place to build your family unit. You never know when you receive a phone call, text, or see a Facebook post that one of your classmates is gone too soon. After my graduation and the WHO internship in Switzerland, uh, my husband, Jude, and I set out to grow a practice, moved back to the States, and settled in Tennessee. We started our practice, Active Family and Sports Chiropractic. What we didn't know at that time was that we would actually grow into being a family. Our community became our extended family, and then within our home, we grew a family as well. For every major milestone we had in practice is intertwined with my journey to motherhood. We began to embody everything it means to be an active family. So my first point to make for you today in this journey of life is please be yourself. You are the only you. Figure out what is non-compromisable and important to you and honor that. Don't hide your true self or start to wear your tri chiropractor trying to get a job face. It will exhaust you. In the planning stages of our first year in practice, we needed support, um, but we didn't exactly find it in the right place. It turned out to be a little bit of a monetary loss after countless letdowns and ill-suited advice bordering on illegal and unethical practices just to get business in the door. Know this about me. I am fiercely passionate about nutrition and will shout it to the rooftops now, but seven and a half years ago, I was delivering sheet cakes to local businesses to drum up leads. I can tell you now that that doesn't work. Okay. There are many other things that you can do to be successful in life. So my first lesson, if you don't remember anything else I said today, don't deliver cake. <laughs> um, so I ask again, what matters to you most right now? For me, purpose, travel, and family. For a lot of you, finding a job, passing boards, or paying back student loans are high on that list. But without me, or without you, on that list, the other things don't really matter, do they? To complicate things further, I can tell you that the moment you birth another life, none of that will matter. I'm talking to all you ladies out there. All your focus will be on nourishing that child. You will know too much and nothing at all in those first few weeks of weeks and months of parenthood. You will start to feel like you never want to return to work again. But I'm here to tell you that you can, and you should, don't let your gifts, talents, and expertise hide out in motherhood. There's a statistic floating around right now that 80% of female chiropractors are not practicing after five years. Find the support you need to return to practice, the present and profitable way, as said by my mentor, Dr. Danielle Eaton. The world needs us. America needs us. Our communities need those mama chiropractors. But they don't need burnt out professionals, which if you haven't heard, is now a diagnosable condition according to the World Health Organization, burnout. Your patients will be stressed out. Your patients will be burnt out. We need you to be a beacon of light for them. Set the example in self-care and health priorities and lead them on their own journey to health. Chiropractors are great at this. You may be amazed how much you know compared to the average Joe. This leads me to my second point, be present. Be present in the moment. In clinic, we call this present time consciousness. Check your baggage at the door and enter it only focused on your patient's needs. I remember one busy afternoon in practice a few years ago, I had patients double looked and there was no end in sight. I entered the room of a patient who I'd been seeing for a few months, off and on, and I asked her how she was doing. And I recalled that her father had also been sick, so I asked how he was. And she shared with me that he had actually passed away. So in that moment, all I could do was give her a hug and cry with her for a second. I'm not a crier, but you know, the moment um, demanded that, I guess. Treated her, moved on to my next room. I get there, my next patient has tears in her eyes too, but she's excited. She had a positive pregnancy test that morning. So she was excited at the moment of possibly becoming a parent. And I had just left the room of a patient who was grieving the loss of a parent. And it really just struck me as how much we can be there for our patients. We have to truly understand the full spectrum of their lives and what emotions can play in their own health outcomes. If I had not taken the time to get to know these patients and understand those emotional connections, I would have truly missed what it meant to serve. So please be present with your patients. They're not just numbers or a paycheck. They are people and they have lives too. Lastly, be present with your family. I challenge you to leave work at work when it's time to be with your loved ones, so you never know exactly how much time you will have. 
So for all those dads and dads-to-be out there, please know that fatherhood will tug on your heartstrings too. Make time to show your children all the things that matter to you. This leads me to my third and final point, to be open and intentional. T.S. Eliot wrote, we must not cease from exploration. And at the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we began and to know the place for the first time. When I interpret this quote, I'm reminded of a few things. Trust the process. Set intentions and never cease to explore. Vision cast your life with the universe or with God or any other higher being in your life. I remember the day after graduation, Jude and I were packing up our apartment in South St. Louis. I was going to drive back home to Florida with everything I owned in my Prius, and he had a moving truck headed back down to his home in Tennessee. I only made it a few miles down Gravoy, and it dawned on me that I forgot the reason I came here. I literally left my DC diploma, my speaking envelopes they're going to give me today, uh, behind the door in our 1900s apartment. And I was like, well, I can't, I can't just leave it there, right? I've got to turn around and get the back and get it. So um, went back, got my piece of paper, you know, and that three and a half years I've been here in St. Louis certainly had become a chiropractor, but I, I needed the piece of paper, right, to show me that I had done it. Um, so I got to see Jude one more time. So when I left St. Louis, drove my car to Florida, then flew to Switzerland and, and completed my WHO internship. Um, thinking back on the story in the last few weeks, it was a pivotal moment for us as a couple. I'll spare you the details, but looking back on the past eight years, we've accomplished pretty much everything we set as goals back in Tri-7. Graduate, own a business, buy a house, have a family, travel, teach, be leaders in our profession. So for some of you sitting down and writing goals may seem like a silly exercise, but you truly have to sit down and give yourself time to be intentional and write it down and save it in a place where you can look back at it later. My invitation to speak to you today wasn't an accident. It was a series of being in the right place at the right time with the right people over and over again in my life. At that moment, at a cafe in Berlin, having lunch with the president of Logan University, was just where I was supposed to be, and you are exactly where you are supposed to be today. For me, traveling is an integral part of my life. I embrace it for personal and professional growth. I implore you that if you don't exactly know all your plans at this moment in time, to be open to the possibility that there is a whole world out there for you to explore. In fact, the WFC co-authored a paper released just last month that outlined the status of the chiropractic workforce globally. The chiropractic profession is now accessible to local populations in 90 countries around the world. There's never been a better time to be a chiropractor. Truly, there's never been a better time to be in healthcare, at least on our side of the field. The conservative, people-centered side. Embrace collaboration and integration within the greater healthcare landscape. All of you graduates, those in the bachelor's and the master's programs have something to offer to better all of our experiences in this world. In closing, I have a couple of challenges for you today. You will be the same person in five years as you are today, except for the people you meet and the books you read. As said by Charlie Tremendous Jones, leaders are readers. Make a plan to continue your education, and I'm not just talking about your annual CE for licensure. Pursue certificate, uh, specialty diplomate, another degree in the next five or 10 years. Never give up on pro progressing yourself further in your profession. You don't know everything today, and that won't change a month from now when patient zero is sitting across from you. Hone your craft. I specifically remember ripping out into cold sweats the first time I had a hollow back patient in my office. I nervously called him that evening, and his wife assured me he was doing fine and uh, he was feeling better, and she eventually came a patient in our practice as well. Remember, however, that you do know a lot right now, so trust your gut. The one and only patient that I have ever refused to do acupuncture on was a sweet elderly gentleman who had been to multiple medical doctors for his neck pain. Upon a brief physical examination of his neck, I knew something wasn't right. There was a hard, bony movement with just passive range of motion, something I had never felt before. Turns out the reason for his neck spasms was because he had a broken neck. His neck was literally trying to hold his body in place. Had any other provider placed their hands on this patient in the area of complaint, he have not, would have not been shuffled around the medical system for months. So trust yourself and push yourself. My next challenge is do something that scares you, that causes some anxiety or some nervousness. 
If you live your life in a bubble of safe things, you will have a very small life. This talk today has been giving me waves of anxiety for a couple months now. Um, or as Dr. McDonald put it back in March, August will be plenty of time to get you good and nervous. So to wrap it up, I remind you of those three things. Be yourself, be present, be open, and intentional. Okay, maybe that's four things, but they said there'd be no math. <laughs> It starts with you. Your career starts with you. Your family starts with you. Your life starts with you. Your happiness, you again. You are at the start of it all, and it starts today. Congratulations, summer class of 2019.